In this video, we're going to make a random password generator in C, where the password is going to be a mixture of uppercase and lowercase letters, as well as digits and symbols. The first thing we'll do is prompt the user to enter in the length of the password with printf. We'll have printf length colon to ask the user to enter in the length of the password. We'll store the length that the user enters into a variable called length. It's going to be an int variable. So we'll have int length, and then we'll use scanf to accept the user input. So we'll have scanf percent %d and then and length to store the integer that the user enters into the length variable. Now the length of the password has to be at least one character. So we'll have if length is less than or equal to zero, then we're going to exit with an error message and status. So we'll have printf password length must be greater than or equal to one followed by return one. Returning one instead of returning zero is gonna be a signal to the shell that something has gone wrong in the execution of our program. So at this point, we know the password length is valid. The next thing we'll do is dynamically allocate space for a car array that's large enough to store this password. So we'll have car star password is equal to malloc and then length plus one. So malloc is going to allocate space for length plus one number of characters. And that's because our password is going to be length in length, but then we also have to have the special null terminator character that terminates the string. So that's why we have plus one here. Now, because I'm using malloc, I have to include the stdlib.h library. And I should also free the dynamically allocated space once we're done with it. So we should have down here, free password to free that space once we're done working with it. Now, if you're using newer versions of C, like C99 onwards, instead of using dynamically allocated memory, we could just declare a car array called password with the length, length plus one. So we could have this, just car password, and then length plus one here. And this will work in newer versions of C. I'm gonna do it this way though, because I actually wanna have my password as dynamically allocated memory. So I'm gonna keep it this way. Just so that my password is not a local variable that's going to essentially disappear when the function returns, this way with dynamically allocated memory, I can keep a pointer to the password throughout the execution of my program. So the next thing I'm gonna do is declare four string literals that are going to be my types of characters. And I'm gonna have four types of characters, lowercase letters, uppercase letters, digits, and symbols. So we'll have car star digits is equal to, and I'm gonna make this string literal of digits. I'm also gonna keep track of the length of each one of these string literals. So I'm gonna have int digits underscore length is equal to str len digits where the strlen function is going to give me the length of this string literal. Now, if I want to use strlen, I'm going to have to include the string.h library. Now, we're going to be able to use the length of these string literals to help us randomly select a character from these string literals when generating our password. So next, we'll make string literals for lower and uppercase letters. So I'll have car star lowers is equal to and I'll put in the lowercase letters here. Now, one advantage of doing it this way is that if I wanted to say exclude a character, like maybe I don't wanna have the character X, I could just delete it. And then X is not going to be in the randomly generated password. So I'm okay with the lowercase letter X being part of my randomly generated passwords. So I'm gonna just put it back. But if you did wanna exclude certain characters, you could just remove those characters from these string literals. So next we'll have int lowers length and we'll find the length of this lowers string literal. So we'll have string length of lowers. Then we'll do the same thing with uppercase letters. So we'll have car star uppers is equal to a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. And then we'll have int uppers length is equal to the string length of uppers. 
And then we'll have one more string literal for symbols. So we'll have car star symbols is equal to, and then we'll put in the symbols here. So just the symbols associated with each number on the keyboard, and that will be enough. And I'll have int symbols underscore length is equal to the string length of symbols. And again, we could add or remove certain symbols if we needed to for whatever reason. Sometimes certain symbols are allowed as part of a password, and other times they're not allowed. So we're gonna generate the password one character at a time. And for each character, we're first gonna randomly choose between one of these four types of characters. So we're first gonna determine whether the character is going to be a lowercase letter, an uppercase letter, a digit, or a symbol. Then we're gonna randomly choose a character in that string literal for that type of character. So because we're gonna be doing random number generation to help us solve this problem, we're going to have to seed the random number generator using the SRAN function. Now I'm gonna seed the random number generator with the current time in conjunction with the process ID. So to do that, we'll have to include a couple libraries to help us. So first we'll include the time.h library so that we can access the current time using the time function. We'll also include the uni std.h library so that we can access the process ID of the running process using the get PID function. Then down here, we're going to call srand. So we pass srand a value that needs to be different each time the program runs, and we call that the seed value. The seed value needs to be different each time the program runs in order to ensure that the random numbers that a program generates are different each time it runs. So one popular way to do this is to incorporate the current time into the seed value because the current time is going to be different each time our program runs. So what we could pass srand is the return value of the time function when it's passed the argument null. So when the time function is provided the argument null, it's going to return the current time represented as a large integer. We're also going to multiply this by the current process ID as given by get PID. So each process running on your machine has a unique process ID and get PID is going to return that. And we're going to incorporate that into our seed value to make it even more unique. So we're also going to incorporate the process ID as well as the current time. So next what we'll do is loop through our password car array. And we're going to set each character to some random character. So we'll have four int i is equal to zero, i is less than length, i plus plus. So this loop is going to have the counter variable i go from zero up until the length of our password string. With each loop iteration, we're going to use i to set a character in our password character array. Now the first thing we'll do is randomly choose one of these four types of characters, either lowercase letters, uppercase letters, symbols, or digits. So we'll have int, car underscore type is equal to rand modulus four. So rand is going to return a random integer between zero and some very large positive number. If we take that number and then apply modulus four to that number, we're going to divide that number by four and we're gonna get the remainder back. So the remainder of any number from zero to some large positive integer when it's divided by four is going to be one of zero, one, two, or three. Those are the only possibilities. So we're gonna then have car type set to either zero, one, two, or three at random. So we'll use the value of car type to determine the next type of character in our password string. So if car type is equal to zero, we'll say that the next character in our password is going to be a digit. So we'll set password at the index i, where i is the counter variable in our loop, equal to a character randomly chosen from our digits string literal. So we'll have digits at the index rand modulus digits underscore length. So digits is the string literal. And what we're doing here is accessing the character at this index and the index is going to be randomly chosen rand is again 
going to return a random number between zero and some very large number. When we take that number and apply modulus digits underscore length, we're going to get a number between zero and digits underscore length minus one. That's exactly the range of indexes in our digits string literal. So we're going to randomly select the character from digits and assign it to password at the index i. Now we're going to follow this approach for the rest of the string literals for different values of car underscore type. So else if car underscore type is equal to one, then we're going to set the next character of the password string equal to a lowercase letter that's been chosen at random. So we'll have password at index i is equal to lowers at the index rand modulus lowers underscore length. Else if car underscore type is equal to two, we're going to set the next character of the password string equal to an uppercase letter that's been chosen at random. So we'll have uppers at the index rand modulus uppers underscore length. And the only remaining possibility is that car type is set to three. So we'll handle that with an else case. Else the password at index i will be set to a symbol character that's been chosen at random. So we'll have symbols at the index rand modulus symbols underscore length. So that should do it. By the end of this for loop, each one of the characters in our password string should be set to a randomly selected character from one of these four types of characters. So lastly, we'll add the null terminator onto the end of our password car array to terminate the string. So we'll set password at the index length equal to the special null terminator character to end the string. Then we can print out the password itself. So we'll have printf password colon percent s backslash n and we'll put the password here. So we can save, compile and run the program. And if I enter in a length of let's say eight, I get this randomly generated password with eight characters. We have one lowercase p, uppercase k, lowercase h, seven, lowercase h, a symbol here with at, and then lowercase g. So we're getting a good mixture of lower and uppercase letters, as well as digits and symbols. We could try it again. So we can save, compile, and run it again. This time I'll enter in a length of, let's say 12. And now we have a 12 character password here. And again, we can see a good mixture of symbols and numbers and lowercase letters and uppercase letters. So our program is working pretty good. Now, the only thing with this program is that C has what's called pseudo random number generation, where the same seed value will result in the same sequence of random numbers being produced. This is a potential vulnerability. If someone can figure out the seed value based on the current time and process ID, maybe they can figure out the password that would be created. To improve the security of our password, we would need to use more advanced techniques, such as true random number generation. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.